Are you struggling to manage leads in your wholesale real estate business? Maybe you're tired of losing deals because your follow-ups are all over the place. Today, we're gonna fix that. Today, I'm gonna show you how to build the perfect wholesale real estate CRM inside of close.com so that you can effectively track leads, create automated follow-ups, and close more deals. Hey, I'm Jordan. I help real estate wholesalers scale their business using automation and CRM optimization. If you're still relying on spreadsheets or juggling multiple tools, this will revolutionize the way you run your business. Stick with me and by the end of this video, you'll have a fully functional and optimized close.com CRM for your wholesaling business. Before we jump in, let's talk about why close.com is the best CRM for your wholesaling business. Number one is speed and efficiency. With close.com's built-in dialer and SMS features, it'll make sure that you're moving as effectively as possible through your leads. Number two is automated follow-ups. No more manually tracking leads. Close.com's workflow builder has fantastic options to be able to send emails, text message, and even automate calls. Number three is custom pipelines. Custom pipelines allow you to track leads, opportunities, and make sure that the entire buying or selling process in your wholesale business is streamlined. When you take each of these pieces and put them together, you will have a high powered and high efficiency sales CRM that focuses on outbound dialing and closing more deals. If you're new to close, go ahead and click the link in the description below to go ahead and create a 14 day trial. This allow you to hop in there, get familiar with the program and test out its features. Now let's set up your wholesale real estate CRM step-by-step -step inside of close.com. All right, we are gonna go ahead and set up a close.com account specifically for wholesalers. And in close.com, there's a few settings we're gonna go through, and then we're gonna go through the opportunity pipeline, what opportunities you need set up, and then ultimately workflow. So stick around to the end. We're gonna build this account start to finish in under 30 minutes and make sure that you have guidance on exactly how to do that. Now, if you are not a tech person or you want to speed up this process, go ahead and click the link in the description below. My team will put it in there to make sure that you have some time to schedule a call, talk with someone on my team and do a CRM audit. We can look at your current process or the process that you want to build and make sure that we point you in the right direction. Now with the close.com accounts, we also have a link in the description below. If you're signing up as a brand new member to close.com, we are close.com's number one partner. So it's always helpful if you support us in that way. Now, when we come into close.com, there's a couple things that we want to make sure we do. The first is to come down here and turn on send as. This is a setting that not a lot of people turn on. You can see right here, allow automated workflow. So we want to make sure that we toggle that on before we do anything else. The next is come in to email. We want to come into email and we want to make sure that we set up an email signature. You can also set up sending limits to make sure that you are not going over your sending limits. So once you turn that on, you can see here that we set setting limits, making sure that we keep our domain as healthy as possible for sending emails. Emails. Next, you want to come into phone and voicemail and make sure that you click here to add a new phone number. When you do this, you're going to see your country. You can select country and then you can put in your prefix for your specific area code. Pretty straightforward. Once you have an email signature, a phone number, and a the send as turned on, we're able to move into kind of the next part of this. A couple other settings before we move on is team management. You can come in here. You can actually add your team inside of here to make sure that they have access to the system. Now, the first thing that we want to do is navigate to custom activities right here, and we want to set up these custom activities. We have built many, many wholesale real estate accounts as well as many other types of accounts. So we want to make sure we're using custom activities. Now, what are custom activities. These allow you to go to a specific lead and actually create an activity. Now, if I have contact made, you can have different properties on here. Now, what this does is make sure that every time one of these is submitted, it is being done the same every single time. It makes sure that your data is clean. It makes sure that your sales reps are doing the same thing every single time and making sure that you have the data that you need on each lead. So when we are in our custom activities section, we want something called new property slash not contacted. We want a contact made. We want qualified property, underwriting complete, offer sent, offer result, signed contract, closed one, closed lost. Now you may add one or two in here, but you wanna make sure that this follows your sales process. And I'll explain exactly why 
here shortly how to make sure that you never have a lead slip through the cracks because of these custom activities and how we utilize smart views. Moving on to the actual properties that are on here. Once you have the custom activity created and all you have to do to create the custom activity is click this new activity type right here and name it. I recommend naming the structure in one through nine so that they're in order of your sales process. Now, when we come into contact made, you can see that there are a bunch of different lead properties on here. And we wanna make sure that we are adding the necessary information that we want to collect at the time a contact is made. So pretty straightforward, we have lead owner. We always want lead owner. It doesn't matter what kind of custom activity, we want lead owner and we want date. Those are non-negotiable, okay? Make sure they're on there. Again, I told you guys, I'm gonna build this account step-by-step -step with you, how we would do it here at RevPilot. I'm not gonna give you guys any BS or fluff in this video. Make sure those two fields are on there. Now, when we move on, these are the custom properties that you may or may not want. Every single wholesaler looks at different things. Maybe you want roof age. Maybe you want, you know, how many AC units the unit has. Maybe you want the property condition. Totally depends on your specific wholesale process. Now this will get you all the way there, but you have to decide what actual properties are going to be added onto here. So we have facility name, address, outcome, number of locations, owner's desire to sell, asking price, monthly revenue, etc. So make sure that you add these on here. Now this is when contact is made, when that initial contact is made, we want to submit this activity. After the initial contact is made, we have a qualified property in here. And the qualified property is now allowing us to add additional information and qualify the property so that we have all the information necessary, be able to make a decision and send it to underwriting if we want. When we click back here, we also have underwriting completed. This is once underwriting is triggered and the deal is sent to underwriting, we wanna ensure that underwriting is complete. Before 04 underwriting complete, you can have a step that says underwriting, and that would be sending the deal to underwriting, making sure you have the necessary information at that moment. On underwriting complete, lead owner and date, again, non-negotiable and then whatever else you want on that custom activity. The thing is that we have the custom activity. That is the most important part. We have offer sent here, and offer sent has the offer type, the deal value, the confidence, and notes, etc. We have offer result, lead owner, date, facility name, address, outcome, and follow-up date. And then we have signed contract, close one, close lost. So once you have your custom activity set up with the proper custom fields on each, now we can start creating our smart views. And I want you to think of smart views as buckets. This is really, really important that smart views are bubbling up the information that normally slips through the cracks. And this is where the gold is, guys. We make sure that we never have a lead that slips through the cracks. We never have a lead or opportunity that goes missing. When you get to certain stages like underwriting, offer sent, offer result, these are really important because we've already put in the work. We've already qualified the property. We've already communicated with the buyer. We've already got contracts sent. So it's super, super important that we are tracking this. What is really beautiful about this is we can create smart views off of these custom activities. So we can see here where there is an opportunity matching current status of underwriting and there is not an offer sent. Okay. And there's not an offer or there is an underwriting complete activity. So in short, what this is saying is since there is an underwriting complete activity, we know that an offer needs to be sent, but one has not been yet. So this is going to bubble up any lead that has an underwriting complete activity that does not have an offer sent yet. Again, going back to the bucket method, we can see here that the communication date was not today, meaning we haven't communicated with them today. There is no future dated task associated with it. There is not an offer sent. There is an underwriting fleet. So this is gonna allow us and this is the same for every every other smart view, allow us to bubble up that information, catch them on the smart view and make sure that we create a task, we communicate with them, or we add the activity for offer sent if there was an offer actually sent. When we come into here, send contract is gonna be almost exactly the same. So we can see here the total number of incomplete tasks is less than one. The date of communication is not today. There is an offer result matching the outcome of whatever you want, and there is not a signed contract, meaning we sent a contract and it has not been signed. We have not created a signed contract update. So what does that tell me? It means we have a pending contract out. So if they haven't had communication or a future dated task, they need to end up in this place. So I can either do one of those two or mark it as complete. Now, this makes it really, really nice because again, we never have a lead slip through the cracks. We always know where they are at in our sales 
process. When it comes to opportunities, we can manage our opportunities from here. So if you go to status and pipelines, we can see that we have lead statuses, we have opportunities and statuses and pipelines. Lead statuses I wanna talk about for a moment. Lead statuses are the relationship of a lead to the company. A lot of people mess this up. They put calling outcomes in here. They put dispositions and different things in here. That is not what this is for. Again, this is the current relationship to your company. So in here, we have potential, meaning they are cold lead. We haven't had any contact with them. We have in contact. We have qualified, not qualified, not a good fit, one and do not call. The definition of not qualified and not a good fit, I would combine those two. I don't know why that's in here transparently. So I'm gonna delete that directly after this call because you should only have one not qualified. And if you wanna add a drop down to the not qualified custom activity, then you can have that in there. Now, when it comes to opportunity pipelines and statuses, we can see here we have potential, qualifying, underwriting, needs offer, offer out, accepted offer, under contract, closed one, closed loss. Those are directly correlated to our custom activities. So we wanna make sure that as we move our custom activity through, it's actually moving through these stages. So when we submit that custom activity, it will update the opportunity and move it to the correct opportunity stage. Once you have these, it makes a really nice view because we can come into the acquisition pipeline here. And again, this is very similar for the disposition. You would just have different custom activities in different stages, but we have potential qualifying, underwriting needs offer, offer out, etc. So we can see here all of the potential opportunities. Once we make contact with them, we can move it to qualifying, underwriting needs offer, etc. So this allows us to visualize our actual pipeline. The next big Big item here is workflows. So we wanna make sure that we have workflows firing off in different situations. And typically that is gonna be when a new lead comes in to the system, that'd be one. The second would be any time a activity is completed. So if we have a qualification call completed or a qualified property completed, and we haven't had any activity for X amount of days, then we can enroll them into a workflow. In close, it makes it a little difficult to enroll into a workflow after X amount of time. So what we wanna do is make sure that we would have a smart view and I'll build this for you real quick live. So we would have a custom activity where let's say underwriting is complete. Actually, let's do a contract sent. Let's say there was an offer sent activity, right? And there has not been any communication, right? So the date of last communication is not within the last, let's say seven days, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna save this and we're gonna do workflow enrollment. And what this allows to happen here is when a lead actually hits this, meaning there was an offer sent and there has not been communication within the last seven days, it's automatically gonna enroll these leads that pop up on here to the workflow step. We do need to use Zapier to be able to do that. In Zapier, you will see a trigger, new lead added to SmartView. What that is doing is triggering off of anytime they hit this new SmartView right here, that Zap is gonna trigger, that Zap is then gonna enroll the contact into the workflow. Workflows, pretty simple. We'll dive into these real quick. We wanna make sure that we have our goals set up. In the goals, there are two new features here, meeting booked and lead status changed. You can add those if you want, but typically we're just gonna do income email, SMS, or call, because that is our goal is to get a response to this workflow. When we are writing our text messages, we wanna make sure that our communication schedule is set up properly. So make sure you set that up. And then we want to create email templates for each of these. On the email templates, we have a few rules that we always wanna make sure we do. We want them to be short. We want them to be concise. We want to engage with a response, so you always want to ask a question. Now you can see here, that is following this exact thing. Are you currently considering selling your storage facility? This one is specifically for storage units, but again, the wholesale process is exactly the same. It doesn't matter if it's storage units or single family or the acquisition or disposition side. We're gonna use these same principles to make sure we can build this account properly. Now that we do have, have workflows set up, again, the entry points for workflows is when an outcome happens of some type of activity, when the lead enters the system, or a time goes by with no type of communication. Those are gonna be your three types of workflows. Now that we understand workflows, we have our pipeline set up, we have our custom activity set up, and we've covered smart views, we can start refining the process. And when I say refining the process, we can start identifying what properties on these leads actually matter the most. What we don't wanna do is go create a bunch of extra properties and have them all over the place. Best practices for custom fields is that we are using drop-down selects 
as often as humanly possible. Why is that important? Well, when you come into leads, you're able to click on filter and you're able to sort based on these different things. So if I want to sort by people that are not in a flood zone, I am able to pull up any leads that are not in a flood zone. I can see I have 212 there. Maybe I want to talk to the people in the flood zone for some reason, okay? Where that differs is if you have square feet, you can do is more than or less than. So again, this is another good option, number. Where, what you want to be careful of is text because we can only search by things that are in there and we have to understand what text properties may have even been entered and that can get really messy really quickly. So try to stick to drop downs, numbers, users, dates, etc. instead of text fields. If you need to add text fields, you always can. We're pretty much at the end here. That is the most important thing. So we need to make sure our settings are set up for send ads, email, phone and communication, make sure we have a phone number. We want to make sure that our custom activities are created with the correct, the correct properties on each. We want to make sure our statuses are set up. And then lastly, our opportunity and pipelines are set up. Next, we want to make sure that we have our workflow set up as well as our smart views. As long as you use the method of a bucket and making sure that you have this on here, then all that smart view is going to do is catch the data that you need on there. And if nothing is on there and then nothing's on there, we don't need to worry about it. It's a bucket. We want to clear the bucket by the end of the day, every day. This makes it super simple for your cold caller to work through the system. It doesn't overcomplicate anything. The last thing I want to talk about is the power dialer. So now that we have all of these leads in here and we have an actual sales process, we can start using our cold calling smart views. And what this is basically saying is there has not been a call within the last four hours. The total number of calls is less than six. The last direction of communication is not incoming. The current status is not any of one do not call qualified or not qualified. These are cold leads. There is not a contact made activity and there's not a qualified property activity. So you begin dialing on this list. All I have to do is click on the phone icon right here, click continue calling, and it's going to start dialing through those leads. When someone picks up, let's say Abe here picks up Abe storage. We want to make sure that we log the contact made activity or the qualified property activity, notifying that we actually had that conversation. Now, when we do that, that lead is going to instantly disappear from the smart view and you can just continue through the process. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please go ahead and click the link in the description below. Schedule a time to talk with me or someone on my team. We'll take a look at your current process or the process that you want to build and point you in the right direction. It may make sense to work with us and have us speed up the process for you. It may make sense for you to do it on your own, but I can't really determine that until I see what you are trying to build and where you currently stand. Again, we are close.com's number one partner. So there's also a link in the description below. If you want to try out close.com, there is a free 14 day trial for anyone who starts a new account and you can play around with it. You can watch this video on slow-mo. You can set up the account and test it out for yourself. But with that, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. I hope this video added value. And if you liked this, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more videos, updates, and tutorials. Cheers.